Hello? What's going on, my G? Hello, hello. How yeah. are you? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, all right. What's going on, my man? Nothing much. How are you? Are you driving? Uh, no, I'm over here sitting at this, uh, sitting at a dock, like we always do. <laughs> sitting at a dock, waiting on, waiting on, waiting on to get loaded. My man, gotcha. my man, John in the building. Welcome to the show, man. How you feel this afternoon? Hey, I'm I'm feeling all right, man. Thanks for having me on. Hey, not a problem, man. Thanks for coming on. Well, before we get started, man, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, where you from. Well, um, Sal, um, let's see. I, I drove trucks for the past three years. Um, before that, I was doing freelance writing and freelance content stuff online. Um, I drove for Uber for a little bit. Uh, that was kind of my start into the transportation industry. I guess you could say I did a lot of driving for the rideshare companies, different, different rideshare companies. Um, yeah, that kind of, that kind of led me into trucking and, uh, did it for about three years and taking a break from it at the moment, um, to focus on the content stuff again. But, uh, you know, I'll probably I'll probably go back to trucking at some point, but uh, so yeah, so, right now I'm just enjoying so, a little bit of time off. So before you got into trucking, that I mean, before you got into trucking, you what what what, what kind of jobs that you that you did have other than Uber and the ride sharing? Did was there anywhere else that you was working at uh, before you got into it? Yeah, yeah. My first job uh, in high school, I worked at uh, Arby's for a little bit. Um, I worked at a grocery store for a few years during college, um, you know, just bringing up groceries and stocking shelves and that kind of thing. Um, and then the job I had after that was for a company, uh, basically a precursor to Uber Eats, um, where we would, you know, pick up food from restaurants and, and different places that didn't have their own, like, in-house delivery. Um, and then Uber Eats, you know, once Uber Eats came out, obviously that kind of took a big chunk out of their business but um okay okay yeah that's 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 pretty much what i've been up to <laughs> all right all right so that's what's up man that's what's up so uh let's let's talk about uber for a little bit how, how long you was doing that before you know before you decide to step out of it because i i drove for uber i you might as well say that i was the uh, inaugural guy you know when it when it came to cleveland you know, everybody that signed up, including myself, in the beginning, it was great. I mean, you know, the money was there. Right. We was making money. Uh, we, was, we was making close to like $2 a mile when when Uber first came to town. But but now, you know, as of now, you know, the money ain't all that hot no more like it used to be. But when did you, when did you start Uber and what were some of the horror stories? Because I'm sure there was plenty of them. <laughs> yeah, honestly, most of my rideshare work was on the delivery side. I did do a little bit of a little bit of Uber. Um, I remember one time I had this this lady that she must have she had taken a sleeping pill or something in the back seat of my car because when we got to where she was going, she was just passed out. Like I <laughs> I had to like shake her for a good sixty seconds before she like woke up and got out of my car, but. Um, you know, different things. Uh, I, I didn't get in right at the beginning like you did. I, you know, I kind of wanted to wait and see what it was all about. So the money was still okay while I was doing it. But, um, most of what I did was food delivery. I did a lot of food delivery. I did a little bit of, um, Amazon flex as well. That's mm -hmm. the kind of the delivering Amazon packages in your personal vehicle. I did a little bit of that, but, um, how did you, you know, how did I, you get involved with, how did you get involved with Amazon Flex? Uh, it's similar to, to Uber and Lyft where, you know, you just fill out a basic application. It may have yeah. changed that's a what little they, bit. That's but, what you told um, me to put it on before I got here. Yeah, it's, the, the thing is messed up. But it's all negative 10, though. All right, go ahead, John. My fault. No, you're good. Um... Yeah, it's, it's pretty much similar to, to the other rideshare companies, at least when I got into it. Um, it may have changed a little bit because I, I got into that kind of at the beginning. Um, so it may have changed. But, 
Yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same. You, you're in your personal vehicle, you know, you, you drive to the little restaurant, so you load you up with a bunch of packages, and you go out and deliver them. Uh, I think at the time I was doing it, it was like an hourly rate structure, so they, you, you could see what you were making before you accepted, and then they uh, divide up the work into like four-hour blocks. So, so you accept the block, and then you see what how, you're going to make for that block. Wh- how, how did you find out about... Uh what is it called? Amazon Flex? What, what what you do? Is that like an app? Just like Uber? Or you actually had to uh, fill out an application and, and talk to somebody uh, talk to somebody about, you know, working for them? Um, this was a couple years ago when I did it. When I, when I did it, you didn't really have to talk to anyone, but there was like an onboarding thing where they'd show you a PowerPoint and, and, and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I found out about it through my uh, through my freelance work at the Rideshare Guy. That was kind of what I was focusing on at the time was was making content for that blog and um, and YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. So by by being connected to that, I was I was pretty plugged into all of the different uh, gig economy type things that were popping up. So um, when Amazon Flex came to my city, I was pretty pretty early in the door. I think the main problem uh, for me was that there were more people wanting to do it then then packages that needed to be delivered so there's a lot of competition for the block okay. you know okay. people you know sit there staring at their phones and then tap as soon as the blocks would you know appear on the app to to get the work but so uh, it was know, more it, it was, again this is all was, like, was it like was it like uh was it like was it like uber like if there was a package that needed to be delivered it will it will it will pop up on the it will pop up on the app and it gives you a few seconds to uh accept it or not before somebody else accepts it um it was a little different um the way it would work is is they would post um like four hour blocks um usually like a day or two in advance and you would accept and then for your for your block for your shift you would basically drive to the warehouse and then they would load you up with a bunch of packages. Um, and there was no way to tell, like, before you accepted the block, what packages you would get. But mm-hmm. usually it'd be, you know, between 15 and 30 different items that they would load into your car. And then uh, there was an app that you would use to basically, it, it would figure out for you basically the route that you would take to deliver all those packages. Mm-hmm. Um, and you'd go through and do that. And then, uh, it, you know, if there were any that you couldn't deliver for whatever reason, you'd have to go back at the end and, and return those to the warehouse after the right. after your route was done. How how did y'all get paid? How 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 was the pay structure on that? Did did y'all get paid uh, daily, weekly? Um, it was hourly. So basically, I, I'm pretty sure it was two and four hour blocks. I want to say it was like eighteen dollars an hour, um, and then plus tips which, you know, you don't typically think of tipping for, for an Amazon delivery, and people don't usually tip on Amazon deliveries, but right. um, I guess there is an option for people to do that. It's, it's mainly to serve that um, that two-hour delivery uh, uh, orders that they have now. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not, you, usually you aren't delivering, like, regular packages. Usually it's stuff that people ordered that they want, like, right away. So with that, so so with all that, you know, with driving, you kind of like got a, you kind of like got the bug or something like that. Was was there anybody that you that you talked to, or what was it that you got on YouTube and you just saw other, you know, saw other uh, semi truck drivers talking about they their experience? What what was it that inspired you to get into trucking? Yeah, kind of all of the above. Um, I had a friend that. Um, went through the, the Millis training program and made a lot of posts, um, you know, on their private Facebook, uh, kind of saying what it was like and, and sort of giving me an inside look at, at what, what the process was like. Um, and the other thing that, that really got me into it was, uh, the housing market. I mean, uh, I was kind of in between apartments at the time and I wasn't really enthused about the idea of, you know, paying a bunch of rent. So, the idea of just moving into the truck seems pretty good. Um, 
So that that was that was definitely what, what got so, me into it. So you was one of them so you was actually one of them guys that said to yourself, like, yo, bump it, I could just put everything in storage and then just go out here and live the nomadic lifestyle in the truck until you actually got in the truck and you figured out what it was all about. Uh <laughs> well, um which route did you go to get your your CDLs? Did you did you go the route of of going to a company and and getting it through them, or did you go the route of getting it from a uh, from a schooling? Uh, I I did get it through Millis Transfer. Um, if I had to do it over again, I would go to a school. Um, at the time, I didn't know about uh, like grant programs and stuff. I, I've since learned that there's a lot of different ways that you can get your CDL you know, right. for free by getting a, by getting a grant. Um, at the time I didn't know about that. Um, so I did go through Millis. It wasn't a bad program, you know, I mean, I think the overall cost of it was at the time that I did it was about $4,500, which, you know, it's zero money down and you pay it back over the course of the first year and whatnot. But, uh, you know, if I had to do it over again, I would definitely explore getting a grant and going to a, like a, a school that's separate from a company. Cause I, I think that there's a, a lot of advantages to being able to pick and choose where you want to work after you get the CDL rather than being tied to that starter company for a year. Right. Right. So with Millis transfer, uh, you, you, you did go through them. Uh, how, how was the, how was the experience, uh, going through Millis transfer, getting your CDL? Um, it wasn't bad. Uh, they put us up in a, you know, a pretty nice, uh, hotel that was pretty close to the, the terminal where I live. Um, it was, you know, you share a room with another student and then it's, um, one week in the classroom, one week on the backing range, one week of kind of driving around in a group, like in a student, student driver truck. And then after that, uh, I believe it was six, about six weeks. Um, over the road with a trainer um, before you get your own truck. So it, it was pretty thorough, um, pretty thorough training. Obviously, you know, that, that first day in your own truck is going to be scary no matter what. And, you know, there's still a learning curve those first How, few months. You, you know but, what? Um, I, I, I've been fortunate to, you know, and I'm, 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 I'm talking about my experience with orientation because I, I went to school and actually got my uh, – got my CDLs. I kind of did the, kind of did the research and, um, kind of figured it to myself, like, Hey, you know, I, I didn't want to be subjected to, uh, to any companies, you know, by, by paying them back or being obligated for, to them for a year or whatever, whatever. I had a whole bunch of companies, you know, reached out to me when they was like, you know, Hey, you know, we're looking for drivers and we can we can pay for your CDLs. And at first I was like, oh, man, my CDLs is free. You know, I, I you know, kind of had that big head. But then when I looked a little bit deeper into it, like, you know, especially with Stevens Transport, because they was they was one of the first companies to reach out to me to offer the CDL program to me. And I was like, hmm, well, I almost pulled the trigger, but then, like I said, when I when I looked in it a little bit deeper, uh, yeah, I, I kind of went the way that I went to get my license. But talking as far as the orientation, you know, I, I wasn't a fan of sharing rooms with anybody. So what was that experience like during your CDL training that you had to share rooms with 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 a complete stranger how, how was that like yeah uh, that's a good question um it wasn't too bad i think i think they kind of um matched us up with roommates kind of based on like our ages you know so mm -hmm. i was i was with another young guy we you know we had some stuff in common we, we you know we would play video games that in the evenings after class and stuff so it, it wasn't too bad uh i can definitely see how some of my bad experience so you know if they didn't get along with their roommate that was definitely the case some of the other folks that were that were going through the the training program with me mm -hmm. and you know it, it, it was a pretty nice motel like it wasn't like we had our own rooms or anything but it was like a pretty nice environment to be in but i can also see how 
if you went to a company that maybe didn't put you in as nice of a motel, maybe, it, you know, maybe that like adds to the stress of the experience overall and, and stuff. So, right. yeah, I, I think, I think, uh, the way you did it, you know, going to, going to school, I, I think that's the way to go. I, you know, company training is, is fast, but not necessarily, uh, preferred way to do it <laughs> so what after you uh of course you got your, of course you got your license um and you obviously must have went to work for millis um you know i i you know i'm a fan of your youtube channel i mean i just recently found it but i you know i i, I quickly became a fan of it because you know what you what you was Thank talking you. on there. The way the way you was delivering your content and everything was 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 well on point. Um, so for the Thank three you. years, you welcome, you welcome. For the three years, did you did you do the entire three years with uh, Millis transfer or or you just got your license, worked through them, uh, fulfilled your obligation, and went somewhere else? Uh, so I worked for them almost for three years. Actually, yeah, it, it was about three years. I, I did the last three months at a at a different company, at a at an LTL company out of Ohio. But um, the majority of it was at Millis. Yeah. All right. So during during your time in Millis <laughs> for the three years, <laughs> bro, if somebody would have came to you in the beginning and said, "Hey, I got this awesome trucking job." And you could see the world, but you're going to be making eight dollars and eighty seven cent an hour. <laughs> what would you would have said back then if somebody would have came to you and said that? Well, here's the thing. I mean, I already kind of knew going into it. You're not getting paid when you're sleeping. You're not getting paid when you're in the truck stop. You're not getting paid when you're at the dock mm -hmm. most of the time. Mm -hmm. Um. I was really in it for the annual earnings, to be honest. Um, if, if you look at any OTR job, any job where you're sleeping in the truck, that hourly is going to be garbage because you're spending all this extra time in the truck, you know? Right. Um, but in terms of the, in terms of like ramping up your annual earnings, in terms of getting affordable health care, in terms of like having housing, um, the other thing that I didn't mention in that video is the the added value of the housing because you know if you if you're staying in an apartment uh you're paying your electric bill you're paying your water bill you're paying your internet bill i mean right it, where i'm from that's at least a thousand a month so it, if you take that twelve thousand that you're saving and you kind of roll that into your earnings that's money that you would have otherwise been spending you know that changes the equation a little bit but um you know, if I had to do it over again, I think the thing that I would do is not stay at the starter company for as long as I did. Mm -hmm. um, I had some advice from some from some older folks who said, you know, stay at your company for two years. Still, it's a good company. It's not, you know, it's not the best company, but it's not the worst company. You know, you can make pretty good money. The equipment's well maintained. They get you home on time, et cetera, et cetera. And if you stay there for two years. That'll look better on your resume than right. if you jump ship after one year, right. um, because it's kind of a hassle to change companies. You know, you got to yeah, clean is. out the truck, you got to mm. go to the orientation and all this mm -hmm. stuff. So, um, but I do think had I had I known uh, what else was out there, I, you know, I wouldn't have gone to them to get my CDL in the first place. <laughs> gotcha. But even if I had done that, I think I would have. I think I would have probably left after a year um, just to get some more experience and see what else was out there. You know. Well, you know, I'm I'm a big proponent. I I used to, you know, when I did videos in the in the beginning, you know, in the beginning of uh, my trucking career, I used to tell people all the time, like, yo, you know, come in, do your year, and and then bounce out, and you get something better. But that's not always the case, you know. Even even after doing a year, you're still gonna bounce out into something, into something that's less desirable, you know. So I figured. Right. I figure maybe stay with a company for at least two, you know what I'm saying? At least two years or so, because that will look not only good on your resume for other companies, especially, you know, like more smaller mom and pop companies where you can make decent money at, they look at, they, they look at how many companies you jump ship between the time that you was at, you know, at a company. So 
by you staying at your starter company for as long as you did, you know, it is a good thing, you know, a good, you know, it is a good thing. It shows, it shows loyalty when you went into, you know, the, the other company that you went into, which was what LTL for the, for the three months that you was there. Right. Right. Yeah. And honestly, that <laughs> when I went to switch companies, they didn't even interview me. Like I sent them, like I filled out the application. I said, Hey, I've been a truck driver for three years. I've got a clean record. And they were like, when can you start? <laughs> it was, it, there was no, it was the easiest job interview I've ever had. So, you know, but the other thing about it was when I hit the two year mark at Miller, it was also the start of the pandemic. And there was a lot of information flying around and I didn't want to be you know, going into an orientation with a bunch of people, right. staying in motels with a bunch of people. I was like, you know, it's just me, the truck, like I can manage this. So that was the other, that was kind of the other piece of it that kind of kept me in there for that, for that third year. But, um, but yeah, um, definitely, you know, it, the more years you get in the industry, the, the better job you have access to for sure. Now, you know, the pandemic, you know, the people I've read somewhere that, uh, that that the people is is reverting back to their old to their old I don't give a fuck about a truck driver themselves you know like but during the pandemic they was all they was all in they they was all in saying oh well yeah we glad for the truck driver and and thank you very much and all like that but then but when the pandemic is like semi over and you can walk around without your mask and all like that now now the truck driver is seemed to be uh, a hindrance to you again uh, after <laughs> after true. every after everything said and done man about the pandemic and all like that what's what's what was your feelings through all uh through all of that um honestly i was grateful to be a truck driver um during it because you know my income was never affected uh the, like the only the only thing is you know you can't go to the buffet anymore you know you can't go to the 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 uh, what's it called the iron skillet anymore mm -hmm. i mean you know you can't dine in at the mcdonald's it's like it, that's you know if that's the worst thing that happens to me like you know i i you know i had it pretty good compared to the people that were working in grocery stores or you know even at the truck stops you know running the cash registers cleaning the showers i mean in terms of the in terms of the exposure in terms of the you know changes that we had to go through um I, you know, I would much rather have been a truck driver than, than, than doing, you know, retail or, or something yeah, like that. Retail, I, the, the re thing retail that, restaurants, uh, small mom and pops really, really got hit hard. And even after, even after it, you know, we're coming up out of it, some of these restaurants is still, uh, feeling the, feeling the, feeling the burn of it because the people that used to work for them are not coming back to work. They, especially for us, you know, when we're out here trying to look for adequate food to eat, you know, instead of hitting the Arby's, the McDonald's, the, 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 you know, you know, places like that, you know, it, it would be, it, it's kind of cool for us to get out and go and sit down and have a, nice little dinner or two and we couldn't even do that during the pandemic and now it seems as though that we still can't do that now with some places i mean you know denny's is back uh and some iron skillets is back but you know the other places that used to be open is not open true 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 yeah i even before the pandemic i was mostly uh uh, you know, I'd hit the Walmart every week and, and do grocery shopping and just like microwave stuff. So for me, it wasn't a huge, huge uh, imposition, but I can definitely see like, you know, if you don't have a fridge, if you don't have a microwave in the truck, yeah, it, it would have been, <laughs> that probably would have been a different story. But, you know, I got pretty used to dining in, in the truck as it were. So. Now, now, being that you like you, you're relatively new on YouTube. You you don't have that many videos. But what was the concept of of your channel when you when you first started? Well, I made a video a year into my job at Miller um, for the rideshare guy, which mm -hmm. um, he's the, he's been a 
a client of mine. I've made a lot of content for, for his website and for his YouTube channel um, during my time in the gig economy. And um, he came to me and said, hey, I know you're a truck driver. You know, it'd be really cool if he could make some content about that. So I, I made a, a couple videos. Um, he doesn't, he's got uh, about 90 something subscribers, 90,000 subscribers. I think now he's, he's pretty well known in the, mm -hmm. in the gig economy sector, but, um, the video did okay, but then I guess someone posted it to Reddit and it wound up getting like 3 million views all of a sudden. Um, so because of that video, was, I was getting all that traction. I was like, geez, I guess, I guess I should gotta make, keep make it a up. YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> so, gotta keep it up. Yeah, gotta keep the momentum the going. Got to keep the momentum going, exactly. So, right. you know, we'll see how it goes. It's, so it's the name, definitely not something I can live off of. But, definitely you know, the name of the channel. for fun. Definitely the name of the channel is uh, Trucking Seriously. Uh, when you was coming up with names, because, you know, it's a lot of channels out there that got that got trucking, trucks, trucker, truck this, truck that, trucking with whoever and all like that. What, what, what was um, with all those trucks in the name? Uh, why did you choose trucking seriously for uh, for your YouTube name? <laughs> um, that's a good question. I was mainly looking for something that uh, wasn't taken on all of the platforms already. I got, you know, my name is John. I've got a pretty common name, but you know, mm -hmm. I had to find something that wasn't taken already. That was, that was the main thing. Yeah. Like I said, man, you you know, the way you present your content and everything, you know, not only, not only that it's informational, but you made it entertaining as well. So, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty good. And also you use, you know, you have good use of your green screen, especially in the, in the one video that I, that I featured and everything. So I was like, yeah, let me, you know, when I was just coming through, I'm looking and I'm like, this guy made what, how much he made what? And that's what I was like, okay, well, let me go ahead and feature this guy and reach out to him and uh, get him on the show. So John, man, I really do appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing, you know, sharing your time with me, man. I really do appreciate that. Uh, right now, you said the LTL company, the last company that you worked for uh, for three months is out of Ohio. So that's my hometown. So are you out of Ohio as well? That, I'm, I see the phone number is a Georgia number, though. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm from Georgia. Um, I was doing I was doing OTR for them. It was it was like a LTL kind of for a for a manufacturer out there where we would deliver their freight and then um, pick up like parts and stuff for the manufacturing process on the way back. So it was it was it was the usual OTR thing, you know, fourteen out, two off. But um, you know, they they paid better. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I, you know, I, I was just tired of the OTR thing. I, I realized I, I thought I could leave Millis and maybe power through for another couple of years. But, um, yeah, I decided to take a break and, uh, you know, kick back, make some YouTube content for a little while. <laughs> so I was talking about, you know, I was just recently, as as a matter of fact, next week is going to be, uh, I'm gonna, well, I think it's probably going to be week after next because I already got next week set for uh, content for next week. But, uh, I was talking to drivers about driver burnout, man, and and it seems as though uh, within the three years, you, you know, within the three plus years that you was driving, you 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 pretty much got burnt out, man. I mean, what what was the cause of your what was the cause, in your opinion, of your burnout? Yeah, for sure, um, definitely, definitely being a PR. I think um, you know it, it just gets old living in the truck. You know, living out of truck stops, um, and when you when you when you go home for that weekend, you know, you think I'm just going to relax, but then you know, there's you stuff really can There's there's chores, you know. There's errands to run. It's it's not um, it's just not a good work life balance. I think if I had switched to doing something local, I think I probably could have stuck it out more. But um, you know, that's that's a whole different can of worms. <laughs> yeah, I've you. never actually driven the day cab. So, you know, probably at some point I might go back to that, but, but we'll see. Were you before, uh, before I let you go, um, and, and for as long as you've been in it for three years, were, were you able to, to, you know, save up a nice little bank for yourself or, or, or what? 
Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I, you know, I over the course of the three years, I my main expense was was food and my cell phone bill. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I, I saved a ton of money. Um, it's definitely good for that. You know, it's good for paying off debt, student debt, credit card debt. I mean, the the, the cash flow of, of just living in the truck is is definitely very good. <laughs> the lifestyle, not so much, but but you know, it's it's um if you go into it with uh, clear, clear eyes and clear expectations, but you know, definitely doable. All right, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, what are you, do, what are you doing right now? I mean, what, what, what's your, uh, what's your occupation right now? Um, right now, I'm just working on some freelance projects. Um, I'm doing a little bit of stuff for, for the rideshare guy. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty much functionally unemployed. I'm, I'm making YouTube <laughs> videos. I'm, uh. I'm working on building out a camper van so I can do a little traveling, a little bit of camping and that kind of thing. But, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. All right. All right. Well, John, man, thank you very much for, uh, again, for coming on to the show, man. I really do appreciate you. Um, what, what would be any, what would be any, uh, what would you like to, uh, for my audience to be left with, uh, for trucking seriously? What, what would you like for them to, what would you like to leave uh, as far as tips, advice, or anything like that? What would you like to leave for the audience? Gosh, um, I would say the biggest thing is uh, is drive safe. You know, trucking is um, is dangerous, and you know, shippers will ask a lot of you, dispatch will ask a lot of you. But at the end of the day, if something goes wrong, it's always going to be your fault. So, um, be safe. Get enough sleep. And, uh, and don't let any of these companies, you know, push you beyond your limits. All right. That's what's up. All right, John, man, I know you about to, you're pretty busy and you gave me this a lot of time. So thank you very much, man. Uh, you're definitely a citizen. Um, you also got a new subscriber, you know, and I'm, I'm sure you subscribe to me. So I do appreciate the uh, support from both sides, man. Uh, whenever you like to come back on and uh, chop it up for any reason. You know, you got my contacts. Reach out to me and uh, and we'll do something. Absolutely, man. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate the, the opportunity. No doubt, man. Thank you for coming on, man. You have a blessed day. Thank you, man. You too. Take All right, care. now.